Welcome back everyone. In this episode of my R2 build, I'm going to show you how I installed and animated the pie panels in my R2 dome. I have five panels and uh, I've used captive studs to install the servos in there. So I'm going to show you how I installed all of these and animated them using the Arduino software as well as uh, some Maestro control boards. So stick around and let's get to it. Here's a breakdown of my pie panel and the way I'm going to be mounting it. So I 3D printed all the parts. I heat formed um, not only this part here, but um, these parts that go on to the inner part of the dome. So I just uh, they have a slight bevel on them. And on the back of this, you can see I've got um, 440 captive studs right here. And uh, they are attached to the top with some cap nuts. So they just lock on. Uh, I may put acorn nuts on there to make it look a little bit more decorative uh, if it's if this bolt is long enough, but I'll have to wait and check that out. Then for the the hinge mount down here, I have a M3 bolt that goes all the way through and a nut on the end. I wanted a lock nut, but it's going to stick out too far, so I just have a regular nut with some thread locker on it. Um, I've got a, a small washer there and a small washer right there. And in between, I've got uh, a, it's a little uh, plastic um, 13 millimeter uh, tube. So I just found that from a pipe that I had, a little plastic pipe. I could have made that out of aluminum, but I had that, so I just cut those and they're 13 millimeters long. So I had to shave the head of the M3 bolt down so that it's no longer than 2.8 millimeters. Otherwise, there's not enough room for the cap nut here. And that's the re same reason why I need space here. And then I had to take the, the total length from that nut, or from that head, all the way to the end of the threads and shave this part down so that total length is 31 millimeters so that it just fits in there. Found that out later when I tried to install these. Uh, then on the top, I have um, an M20 bolt, and uh, it goes all the way through here with just a regular nut and some thread locker on the back of that, uh, right there. And in between, I've got the stabilizers that are 3D printed. That's part of Helmet's hinges that gave me all of these from Astromech site and they just pop on or you can screw the bolt right through them and in the middle there is a um, bushing so that's an aluminum um, bushing that i um, found it's 5 16 inch aluminum tube basically and i just cut it so it's seven millimeters long and then this is the piano wire 
that I'm using and it is um, 0 0.03 inches thickness wire and I just wrapped it three or four times around there and the way I did that is I um, just put a, a bolt that's the same thickness as this uh, tube into a vise and I wrapped it around cut off the end and then um, I just made a, six of these links and that brings us to the um, arm here so on the servo horn uh, I've got um, some easy connectors so this is a easy connector that's a part number 121 and I've got it going through the second hole on that servo horn and then I've got these um, collars on both ends to hold it all in place and in between I've got a spring this is a spring that I just cut in half I put half over here and half over here and then I've got these things that I, um, I call spring bushings that I'm resin printed. So two are flat, they go on the ends, and two have this little bevel for um, that um, easy connector. And that prevents people from um, damaging the servo, so if it gives you some leeway here, so the servo gears get protected if somebody tries to reef on this uh, outer panel. And uh, this is all gonna be connected with 440 um, bolts through here with some cap nuts on both of them. So I'm going to install this centered into the pie panel so that I know that it opens and closes properly. Once that's installed, I just cut on my Cricut this little template and it goes on like that. And then it kind of lines up where the holes have to go for the servo mount so that they're always going to be the same distance away all the way around. So that's my setup and uh, I'll get started on installing it. Then I'll test it out with um, probably a maestro and uh, make a few routines and see how it works. Before we get into just showing you how the uh, panels function, I'm going to show you how I program them uh, using the Arduino software as well as these Maestro control boards. I'll probably be um, animating all of my panels this way. I think uh, it's a really great way and, and it's not that difficult to figure out. So uh, let's take a look first at the Padawan sketch. Uh, this is just part of the sketch. and. Um, I'm going to look at the buttons on the Xbox controller. There's a Y, A, X, and B. And uh, let me just look at my PDF. I'm creating a, a document on that a PDF that explains my whole entire build right from the beginning. And this is just one section of it. But you can see where I'm starting to um, figure out some color coding for what my buttons are all going to do in the combinations and I've altered the sketch the pot of one sketch a little bit so that I could have say this is the Y button on the controller I can have a control nine things so if I just press the Y or the Y and the L1 button or the Y and the L2 R1 R2 and then the Y in combination with the direction pad on the Xbox controller as well so I can just type in whatever I want here add that to my Arduino sketch and uh, then it should uh, function that way. So let's look at the sketch. Uh, here it is, um, just part of the sketch. This is the where the Y button kicks in, so from here all the way down to here. So right now, if um, I get the Y button and the L1 button at the same time, it'll do all of this. And um, right now I'm just gonna show you the animation so the um, the pie panels moving and just this just explains what that does and then otherwise if the Y button and the L2 get pressed uh, then uh, anything in this section here will happen so I've got something happening here and then something happening here when the Y button and the R1 gets pressed and then all the way down to R2 and then for the pad the direction pad left right up down and then if you don't use combination, if you just press the Y button, whatever is in here will take place. So rather than having 
a bunch of things happening in here, like a sequence of events with servos. Um, what ends up happening is the sketch will stop and do all of this stuff. And uh, you won't be able to control your droid moving forward or turning the dome or whatever until that's finished. So I'm going to be using these Maestro control boards and they this will just send a function um, or a, a command to the Maestro control board and it will carry out the sequence on its own because it's stored on the Maestro and the program will continue on. So let's just take a look at that Maestro uh, setup. So let's go to here. So this is the Maestro Control Center. This is free software you can download and then you buy the Maestro boards. So what are these Maestro boards? Well, let's take a look at this. This is another manual that I've created. It's a Padawan 360 and the Maestro Control Board. Basically, it's any Arduino program and the Maestro. So the Xbox controller is going to send signals to the Arduino which the Arduino is going to send signals to the Maestro to activate the servos to make R2 function. So let's just take a look at these boards. These boards come in a variety of sizes. So they can control 6, 12, 18, or 24 servos all at the same time. So obviously from um, more cost effective to more expensive, so I'll pro right now, I think I've just got this one stuck in there temporarily just to show you how the, um, the Pi panels are working. And um, this just shows you how to program the Maestros. It's, the, it's kind of sketchy online trying to figure out how to do all of this. But this is basically what the 12-channel the Maestro can do. So these are all, your, your servos just plug right into here. They go from 0 to 11, so that's 12 servos. Uh, you power the servos from here and then you hook up power into the board that's 5 to 16 volts and then for um, serial commands you have uh, serial out, uh, input and output so I'll take the output from um, from my Arduino and send it into RX here so I just have to have power the RX and the ground and the ground is this one right here I program it with this um, mini USB connector and um, yeah everything's stored on this chip so what gets stored are sequences and um, they're pretty easy to come up with so I'll just show you the software right now let's go to the Maestro Center so right now I'm not using all 12 servos I'm just using these ones here so these five one two three four five um, and they're they're Pi panels 1, 2, 4, 5, and 6. I skipped 3 because 3 um, is actually where the hollow projector is, so I'm not using that to, it's not going to be moving, opening or closing or anything. And these are all servos. You can even tell each the software individually the maximum and minimum positions for um, each servo so you don't overextend your servo and um, the position you want the servos to start at. And uh, let's just take a look here at the channel settings. So here's where you go. I want servo number one. I know it can't go beyond 1888 or 1120 because that's where the, the movement, I want that movement to be within those two um, values. And at the beginning, it says go to. I want it to go, to, when you start this, to go to 1760. Um, that's where I want the servo to start. So basically you just set this all up. You can even change the speed and acceleration of all the servos. All of this is explained in my manual. And then you come up with these um, sequences. So right now I have three sequences. Uh, sequence 0, 1, and 2. So 0 looks like this. And um, you can play the sequences right here and have them activated on your dome just to test them out. Uh, and you can actually come up with the sequences right here. You just move these these around. That's my servo moving in the background. And um, and then you just save a frame and then you move it, save a frame and so on and so on until you have a whole sequence. Once you're done with your sequences, you click copy sequence or copy all sequences to script. And what that does is it creates a script and this is what the script looks like. And this is what um, is generated uh, in, in the background 
when you are coming up with your sequences manually. And then it creates this, and this is what actually gets saved onto the little chip on the Maestro. So all you have to do is, um, when you make a change, it'll say down here, apply settings. You just apply settings and your script gets uploaded to the Maestro. So it'll always remember that. So even if you unplug your Maestro, put it away, bring it back, power it up, uh, this script will still be on it. Okay, so I can call these scripts, um, or sorry, these sequences up in my Arduino program. So I just have to say, you know, play sequence zero or play sequence one, and it'll go ahead and do that. So that's, in a nutshell, what the um, um, Pololu Maestro Control Center looks like and how you create these scripts. So let's um, see what, anything else I wanted to show you on here um, before we go off and try this out. So um, over here, um, when I say, okay, my Y button combinations, if the Y button and the L1 get um, pressed at the same time, it says play this mp3 song and um, carry out anything else that you want done on it. Like uh, right now these are the hollow projectors that are all working, but um, you know I can have it say whatever I want now or do whatever I want. Uh, if I have my Y button and L2 pressed, it says MP3 trigger play number two and so on and so on. So here's where I'm going to be putting my my scripts in. So let's do that. Um, if let's try it with the D-pad, uh, the direction pad. So if Y and left are pressed, it says Maestro Dome. So that's what I called my um, my Maestro because it's in the dome. Maestro Dome dot restart script. So it's going to start the script number zero. So it's going to go find zero and play it. Uh, if I click Y and the right uh, direction button, it's going to start restart the script number one. So it'll carry out number one. So that script is stored on the Maestro. It's doing its thing. And then when it's finished, uh, it'll just stop. And this one is uh, Maestro restart script two. So I've got zero, one, and two all hooked up to the direction control pad and the Y button. So uh, let's try that out and see what it looks like. So here's a shot of uh, the inside of my dome with the um, five Pi panels installed. So they all have the um, spring savers, uh, dome savers uh, or the servo savers on here. And then uh, right now I just have them temporarily hooked up to this Maestro. Uh, you can see the Maestro is ready to go here. I've got the, all the servos plugged in. My um, serial connection plugged in and power and I will activate a sequence with the Xbox controller show you how that works all right here's my uh, Xbox controller there's the direction pads there's the Y button so we're just looking at uh, these combinations first if I just press the Y I just get a sound clip if I press the left and the Y That's sequence zero. Um, sequence one is with the right and the Y. And sequence two is with up and Y. So you can vary the speed. You can also vary the acceleration if you want. So that's where I'm at so far. Next, I'm going to move on to um, adding all of my accessories on there and then adding all the servos that go around the perimeter of the dome and uh, see how it goes from there. So the next part is to put in all of the accessories around here. You can see that my captive studs, I just ground them down a little bit just so that they're flush here and uh, then I'm going to start animating uh, these panels over here and then hopefully uh, won't be too long before my dome is finished. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please stick around for our thought for today. God bless you.